We're on the June 9 exam, page 4. Question 21. A beam of electrons, which are negatively charged, is directed into the electric field between two oppositely charged parallel plates. There we go. Now let's look at this. If there's electrons, they're going to be attracted to the positive plates and repelled from the negative. The electrostatic force exerted on the electrons by the electric field is directed uh, towards the top of the page, that being the top of the page. So that's the right answer. Question 22. When two ring magnets are placed on a pencil magnet, magnet A remains suspended above magnet B as shown. I remember making this a long time ago. Let me show you some of the stuff I've got. Here I've got a couple of ring magnets, but they're a little bit bigger than the pencil ones. And the one floats above the other. Here's another toy, magnet suspending. Instead of the pencil for stability, it's uh, kind of pushing against that glass plate. We can spin. This is kind of neat. But this is probably the coolest thing I've got. This is a magnet. And the plate is a dynamic equilibrium. So every time the magnet wants to flip over, there's an electromagnet that prevents it from happening. And so this is actually floating free all by itself. It's pretty stable. Put a pencil on it. This is called a Levitron. And this is amazing. What's happening is the gravitational force that wants to push it downwards, pull it downwards to the Earth, is being repelled by the magnetic force pushing it upwards. Magnets are a lot of fun. It's kind of a sweet spot in the center when you find it, which is not that easy to do. It becomes perfectly balanced. There's the mirror. Put a pen on top of it. Once it gets in that sweet spot, it's very stable. It's called a dynamic equilibrium. This is cool. So now for the question. Which statement best describes the gravitational force and the magnetic force acting on magnet A due to magnet B? The gravitational force is attractive, yes, and the magnetic force is repulsive. I'm going to go with that, but let's see what the others. The gravitational force is repulsive. No, that would be cool if you could get a repulsive gravitational force. Both the gravitational force and the magnetic force are attractive. That would just pull it down faster. Both the gravitational force and the magnetic force are repulsive. Again, gravitational repulsive force. That would make you rich. Which color of light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters? 5 times 10 to the negative 7 meters in air. Well, we have a chart, the electromagnetic spectrum, and it has the colors of light. But careful, the colors of light are in frequency, not wavelength. So we're kind of stuck. But if we go to the formula sheet, we find velocity is frequency times wavelength. So velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Therefore, wavelength equals velocity divided by frequency. Oh, but we want frequency. So that would be velocity is frequency times wavelength. Velocity divided by wavelength equals frequency. Velocity of light in air is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 5 times 10 to the negative 7. 3 divided by 5 is going to be uh, 6. So uh, 6 times 10. You can get your calculator if you want, but I think it's going to be uh, 14 hertz. So let's go find the color that's 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And uh, 6 would lie between 5.2 and 6.1, so that would make it green. Had we gone with 5, just the number, it would have been down here at orange. And that would have been the wrong answer. We want green, which is the right answer. Really try to get the correct answer on these questions. Question 24. Which type of wave requires a material medium through which to travel? That would be sound. Radio waves can come through space. Television and x-rays come through space, x-ray telescopes, uh, television signals uh, sent from space. The big thing about aliens watching our television shows. Uh, but sound, you need something to talk in. There's a movie Alien, and the ad was, In space, no one can hear you scream, because there's no air. 
Question 25. A periodic wave is produced by a vibrating tuning fork. The amplitude of the wave would be greater. Now for waves, frequency is pitch, amplitude is energy, and for sound waves that would be uh, loudness. So if you want to increase the amplitude, struck softly, no, nope, struck harder, that works. Replaced by lower frequency, replaced by a higher frequency. Strike it harder, make it louder, higher amplitude. 26. The sound wave produced by a trumpet has a frequency of 440 hertz. What's the distance between successive compressions in the sound wave? Well, compressions in a sound wave is essentially the wavelength. They're asking for wavelength. And, uh, and it's sound traveling through air, so we can find its velocity. And here it is, the speed of sound in air at standard temperature and pressure is about 331 meters per second. So if the velocity is 331 meters per second, and velocity equals frequency times wavelength from the last problem we did a while ago, wavelength is velocity divided by frequency, so that's going to be 331 divided by 440. So the answer is going to be a little bit less than 1. That's more than 1. That's a lot less than 1. That's a lot more than 1. This is a little bit less than 1. Pull out your calculator if you want to be sure. Question 27. The diagram below represents a light ray striking the boundary between air and glass. Oh, I hate this question. They give you this angle. Here is 30. But in all ray diagrams, you always measure to the normal, which this would be 60 degrees. I hate that they do that to you. And now they ask, what would be the angle between this light ray and the reflected ray? Well, it's going to reflect off of the same angle it hit at. So if it hits at 60, it's going to reflect at 60. And they want to know what's the total angle between the two rays, which would be 120 degrees. And they can't keep asking the same question year after year, what's the angle of reflection? Because it's always equal to the angle of incidence. So they make it tricky, with a little bit of tricky geometry, to ask the same question in a different way. I just hate that. Go ahead and ask the question, see if you know it. Don't try to trick you. Question 28. In which way does blue light change as it travels from diamond into crown glass? Well, the characteristic of that is wrapped up in the index of refraction. And here's a list that has uh, crown glass, glass crown, 1.52. And uh, it's going to have diamond here. Oh, yeah, there's diamond, 2.42. So as you go from diamond to crown glass, the index of refraction becomes less. Well, and then got frequency and speed. Let's find some formula that's got index of refraction in it. This one says the index of refraction is the speed of light in a vacuum, which won't change, divided by the speed of light in a material. So N is equal to C over V, which means V would equal C divided by N. So if this number is getting smaller as we go from diamond to crown glass, then the velocity has got to increase. Its speed increases. That's the answer.